The attorney in the case says he's trying to get justice for some former students. What we've learned about three lawsuits filed against Lexington Catholic High School. We've lost him. He's gone. And I can't ask him any questions. Family and friends of a federal suspect police say was shot by a fire investigator are demanding answers about what led to his death. Managers of a Jessman County restaurant say they're concerned about a message vandals left for them outside the building. This is WQIT News at 6. Good evening. Months after some former students claimed they were harassed because of their race or gender, three lawsuits have now been filed against Lexington Catholic High School. The lawsuits also name the Roman Catholic Diocese of Lexington. Garrett Weimer has a closer look now at the claims. He's live with our top story at 6. Garrett? Racial bullying, sexual harassment, stalking, racially charged text messages. Those are just some of the claims contained in the 40 pages of the three lawsuits filed today. And the suit says, and the suit says the school did not do enough to stop it. Three lawsuits filed in Fayette County Circuit Court today outline alleged discrimination that attorneys say has been going on for several years at Lexington Catholic High School. The lawsuit claims that teachers, administrators, and coaches did nothing or not enough when they were told about or witnessed some of that alleged discrimination. According to the lawsuit, one student says he was told such things as go back to Africa, you're black, no one likes you, and go back to the fields where all of you belong. The Washington, D.C. civil rights attorney on the case says discrimination is, quote, endemic at the school. Not every victim has chosen to file a lawsuit. Uh, there are more. And it has been a, a very revealing four months, a very distressing four months to know that such a revered institution could conduct itself in this way. You, re you may remember Lexington Catholic brought in a diversity consultant and also established a new committee uh, at the school in April to oversee diversity and ethics. Now today, a Lexington Catholic uh, administrator tells me in a statement that they are aware of the lawsuit, but that they won't comment on it. Live in Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. The attorney says more lawsuits could be on the way. Now tonight we're tracking another round of storms bringing more heavy rain to parts of the state. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey shows us what's on the Defender radar right now. Yeah, those thunderstorms coming at us in waves as basically what we've been seeing the entire summer across the bluegrass state. And right now, those thunderstorms into eastern Kentucky kicking it up a little bit. Some additional development trying to pop here across the Lexington metro. Let's get after it, show you what we are seeing in eastern Kentucky, by the way. Louisa, Lawrence County, that's a severe thunderstorm warning that extends into parts of West Virginia. Strongest storms locally, though, right on top of the Mountain Parkway and now south. So that uh, thunderstorm complex kind of splitting a little bit. Worst of the weather heading into downtown Jackson into Breathitt County. That'll continue to scoot off toward the east and the north. A little more thunder and lightning north of Manchester near Boonville and Owsley County. Some light rains around Somerset north of the Whitley City area, or I should say London down to Whitley City. Somerset were mainly dry. Springfield, Lebanon, a little light rain. Look what we have on the west side of the Bluegrass region. Versailles in Woodford County and points to the south on the BG Parkway. That extends northward. We go towards Scott County High School, Georgetown. A few of those drops will get into the western part of Fayette County here very shortly. The overall theme of the forecast, though, remains one that can produce additional thunderstorms from southwest to northeast. Brand new future radar shows at least some scattered stuff as we go throughout the evening, and then that stuff tries to crank back up late tonight and early tomorrow morning as that cold front slowly makes its way across the Bluegrass State, and we'll show you what that brings for the rest of the week when I come back in a few minutes. Chris, thank you. They're frustrated and pleading for answers. Tonight, family and friends of an explosive suspect want police to explain why he was killed. Investigators say a Lexington fire investigator shot Mark Sawaf last week while searching for trail cameras in Harlan County. Sawaf was in federal custody, accused of putting explosives in those cameras. Kristen Kendi has the update, new at 6. He went on vacations with us. I mean, we knew him so well. 
Leslie Penn's daughter dated Mark Sawaf for almost a decade. Well, Mark was such a loving person. He counseled drug addicts. Penn told us the last two months were beyond difficult for the 39-year-old. He was in federal custody for planting explosives in trail cameras in Harlan County. Someone had been stealing these cameras. He was upset. So he actually figured out a way to put a little firework in a camera that was up in a tree that would go off when that person put a battery in it. And this was only supposed to scare them. It was not to really hurt them. It was not a bomb. Federal agents say one of those cameras injured a man in the chest and the hand. Penn says Sawaf worried about the other cameras. He wanted to go and show these, the police or whomever where these devices were so no one else would get hurt. Which is why Penn can't find a reason for Sawaf's death. State police told us during their search Thursday, Sawaf tried to escape and fought with officers before a fire investigator shot him. We've lost him. He's gone. And I can't ask him any questions. Penn says her family and Sawaf's have tried asking investigators for answers. He was handcuffed. They took him into the woods. He was showing where these devices were. And he never came out alive. State police told us they are still interviewing all witnesses. Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. State police say they're still searching for six to seven trail cameras in a five mile radius. They plan to release more information about Sawaf's death when their investigation is complete. New tonight, investigators are trying to figure out what caused a car to crash into a Lexington restaurant. It happened around 4.30 this afternoon at a Vietnamese restaurant in the Woodhill Shopping Center. No one was injured. People at the restaurant say only one person was inside at the time. The crash damaged the restaurant's front window. Could textbook thefts at three Kentucky universities be connected? Tonight, police tell us they're looking into that possibility. In recent weeks, they say books have been stolen from offices at the University of Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky University, and Moorhead State University. Hillary Thornton is tracking the investigation. The thefts happening as students starting to settle into campus for the school year. The University of Kentucky police chief saying those responsible likely a well-organized group hitting the College of Nursing building at some point during the weekend. Forcibly entered into, they were unoccupied offices and textbooks were stolen. Prying open the locked doors of more than a dozen offices, taking with them an unknown amount of textbooks. Can't speak to what's going on in somebody's mind, whether they're looking to resell or do something with them. Campus officials here say these recent thefts could be related to similar cases that happened back earlier in the summer. This is pretty similar to some issues we had in June and July where some buildings in the sort of the heart of campus over here, Castle Hall and Green, same sort of crime where some unoccupied offices were forcibly entered, in, entered into. Investigators also looking into the possible connection with textbook thefts at other universities, including Eastern Kentucky and at Moorhead State, where campus police tell us they have had five of these theft cases and did recently identify a suspect. We are obviously, we're obviously always coordinating our efforts and looking into the possibility that these are related crimes. University police posting the crime bulletin, making sure folks on campus are aware, and as a reminder, to make sure valuables are safe and secure, including those textbooks. Textbooks are a valuable commodity. Uh, I'm sure there's a market out there for that kind of thing. Textbooks are quite valuable, can be expensive. Uh, and so those would be the kinds of valuables, along with other things that you would think about that ought to be locked down before you leave for the night. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Moorhead State University police say now that they have identified a suspect, they plan on presenting their case to a grand jury soon. New tonight, a golden alert has been issued for a missing Breathitt County man. Investigators say 83-year-old Roosevelt Roberts disappeared yesterday. They say he was last seen driving a late model white Ford Ranger on Highway 15 near Haddocks. Investigators say Roberts suffers from some mental issues. Vandals left a message outside a Jessamine County restaurant and managers there say they have some concerns. The vandalism was caught on surveillance cameras. Andrea Walker talks to restaurant workers and customers about what was left on a sidewalk. It's a dreary day outside the Hacienda restaurant in Brandon Crossing. Below those gray clouds in the sky, employees come across a word spray painted on their sidewalk by vandals. Assistant manager Luis Gonzalez doesn't believe it was a coincidence that Trump was the word they chose to write. He's been trying to put hate onto people against Latino community, black people, Hispanic, 
I guess that's what you start doing. We're just trying to do our job, come here. No, America is already great, so. <laughs> Now, what we're about to show you is actual video taken of two young men. One stood guard while the other did the actual spray painting on the sidewalk. Now, what the man standing guard failed to notice was the surveillance camera right above them. The surveillance video shows exactly how the crime went down. The whole thing was over in less than a minute. Jody Coulter visits Hacienda often with her family. She was shocked and disappointed when she heard what happened. I think it's just somebody being really selfish, really self centered, and not considering how anybody else feels about it. They're just expressing themselves and being as ugly as they possibly could be. Gonzalez says he's not upset about what happened, but he is worried that the incident could escalate into something worse. We can watch that out, but they're going away, you know. But we kind of afraid they're trying to do something else later on against the workers, the employees, belongings. Well, I think they should just be made to apologize and come clean it up. In Nicholasville, Andrea Walker, WKYT. The Nicholasville Police Department says they have no suspects at this time. They tell us this will be treated as a criminal mischief case and not a hate crime. Former Democratic State Auditor Adam Elon has launched a new political organization as he makes a return to Kentucky politics. Republican Mike Harmon defeated Elon last year in the state auditor's race. Elon had been preparing a run for U.S. Senate before losing. And today he launched the New Kentucky Project. He says it's focused more on generating ideas than electing people to office. The answers to our problems in places like Frankfurt and Washington, D.C., are driving the Main Street values that we have in every community in Kentucky. And by turning the state around, we can really encourage people who have come up from that level. The new Kentucky project hopes to have chapters in every Kentucky county. Members will pay $20 in annual dues. Sports radio host and blogger Matt Jones is also involved in the group. Some people in Lincoln County have found a piece of one family's history and they're hoping to return it to the rightful owner. The story next. It is more than 70 years old and was owned by a World War II soldier. A Lincoln County family discovered a Bible that was printed in the 1940s. This is fascinating. <laughs> they know the name of the soldier who owned it then, but they don't know how to return it to his family. Phil Pendleton has the story. Protestant. Protestant version. version. Printed long before many current translations of the Bible were made. I actually wrote in here that it was June 10, 1942. His family did. The Bible was owned by Milton C. Cummins, who married Geraldine J. Kelly in 1967 in Indiana. But where they are now, or even if they're still alive, is a mystery. Well, it's, it's God's Word, and I want this family to have this back. The Bible was discovered in a relative's china cabinet, but how it got there remains a bit of a mystery as well. We're not sure if it was there when she bought it, or over the years somebody put it in there, I don't know. On the front page, there's a message from the president and a signature. It doesn't look like it's been through, you know, a whole lot, but it's, it's in really good shape. They believe Cummins was a soldier during World War II, but they don't know if he actually carried it into battle. Given its small size, that's certainly possible. And, you know, we're not sure, but we just want him to have it back. The young say their research tells them that the soldier, if still living, is probably almost 100 years old. But if he's passed away, they say they would at least like to find his children or grandchildren to return it. In Lincoln County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The family tells us it appears that Milton Cummins was born in Kentucky but moved to Indiana after the war. If you know how to get in touch with his family, again, that name is Milton Cummins. Cummins, go to our website, WKYT.com. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Now, it's been an afternoon and evening full of showers and thunderstorms. A lot of that action is calming down just a little bit. That's a good thing. Problem is, it's going to return later tonight and certainly into the day tomorrow. Defender Radar Network has been awfully, awfully busy today tracking these rounds of showers and storms. Kind of a tropical nature to the air again. So storms have two things, a lot of lightning and a lot of heavy rain. But right now, it's a little downtrend that we are noticing from Sagersville to Jackson and near Buckhorn. 
picking up on some uh, thunder and lightning. But again, this is kind of a far cry from what we were looking at an hour or so ago on Defender. Those showers and thunderstorms may not make it into downtown Hazard at this point. We get into Whitley City, a little thunder shower trying to pop there. Lexington region, some light rains on the west and north side of town. Uh, you get out near Keeneland. Down toward the Fayette Mall, maybe a sprinkle or two. And then north we go toward Masterson Station, Kentucky Horse Park, Marshall Park here on the south side of Georgetown, picking up on some lighter rains. But another little round of some showers and storms trying to fire up around Bowling Green. All of this just ahead of a front. And this front has been a pain. It is slowly working its way toward the area. And still, the flow out ahead of this is coming right off the Gulf of Mexico. Poor Louisiana. More heavy rains out there again today. And some of that's going to kind of get pulled up in here tomorrow with some local high water issues. A possibility, a storm or two around on Thursday. Plenty of breaks, though, in the Thursday afternoon, maybe setting up before a few more storms move in as we go into the day on Friday. Next couple of days, that front on top of us tomorrow. Got to watch that because you can get that front to kind of act as a uh, focusing mechanism to really squeeze out some heavy rains as it slowly presses across the area. And that's exactly what this short range model is trying to look at tomorrow with an inch or two of water showing up on that particular run. Here's a little different version of a computer forecast model. Through 8 o'clock tomorrow morning into the noontime hour. Watch how quickly you start to see those showers and thunderstorms going up. Some areas tomorrow will not get out of the upper 70s because of the clouds and the shower and thunderstorm action. Early Thursday, some of the latest models are trying to pinpoint a little thunderstorm complex into southeastern Kentucky. We'll keep an eye on that. Better storm chances, though, as we go into your Friday on that hour by hour forecast. How many football coaches are watching the forecast right now to see what's going to happen Friday evening? We will have some scattered storms around. Right now, it doesn't look like a pattern that is going to produce just washout material. So maybe not all ground game on Friday evening. Uh, if you get a mutter, good old fashioned mutter, we'll see about that one though. All right, cold front on Saturday is off to our west with showers and thunderstorms out ahead of that across Kentucky. So Saturday into Sunday, we could have some heavy downpours. And then finally, we may try to break this pattern by late Sunday into the first half of next week and really most of next week may have a September feel to the air. And that shows up on the seven day forecast with mainly dry weather early next week with upper 70s to around 80 for highs. Lows may drop as low as 55 degrees. Oh, I can handle that. I can handle that one. Yes, sir. Thank you. Brian Clark County is on the clock for the football previews. Yeah, the Cardinals looking to crack the win column this season. That did not happen a year ago. And we all watch NFL games, but Drew Barker and the boys in blue watch it from a different perspective. That starts us off when we return. Growing up in northern Kentucky, UK quarterback Drew Barker said he was a Bengals fan, and that means he now watches Andy Dalton play on Sundays. Well, today, Barker said he respects all of the quarterbacks who play in the NFL, and it's become a big deal for him and the other Wildcat QBs to watch replays of NFL games to study those guys, watching their footwork and how they manage their teams. We've watched multiple uh, Green Bay games, you know, just Aaron Rodgers throughout the game, how he manages the game, stuff he does, and also, like you said, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, stuff like that. So it's good to see all that. You know, we all get to see um, the different footwork they have and the, you know, the, the way they manage the game and the decisions they make. Uh, so it is really cool, and I like how we uh, take it out to the practice field. I think we're doing a better job of utilizing it. We continue our countdown to UK football now, just 18 days away. 18, the number worn by Boom Williams. How about fast Freddie Maggard, Jacob Tammy, and the great Randall Cobb? 18 also, the number of games during his career that Sonny Collins rushed for more than 100 yards. That's still a school record. Calvin Bird leading the SEC back in 1958 with 18 yards per catch. You can click on WKYT.com to see all of our countdown information. There's only one way to go for the Clark County football Cardinals, and that is up. After going winless last season, the Redbirds are looking to turn things around this season. Lee K. Howard has tonight's 27 teams in 27 days. If something could have gone wrong last season for Clark County, it did. The Cardinals finished the season 0-11. Uh, last year was a rough year. I mean, it was pretty much Murphy's Law. Anything that could have found a way to go wrong just happened to go wrong for us. And all of the team just pretty much teamed up together and said, no more, we can't 
You can't go like that. Clark County had a pair of one-point losses in the first three weeks of the season, and it snowballed from there. The catch is to try to get them to understand what does it look like to finish, what does it look like to go hard every play. But before you can even get to that, it's got to matter. There's got to be some pride. There's got to be something inside them that wants to continue to push and do the right things. The Cardinals are trying to do the right thing by emphasizing running the ball and stopping the run. And that all starts with the big boys up front. I mean, that's what the whole team rotates around. I mean, if the offensive line can set the tempo for the game, then anything else can happen. The team thinks that they have the players at the skill positions to be successful. We only did it those parts. It's just we need like people to just try to get yards upfield instead of trying to, you know, shake people. But other than that, we're we're straight. Clark County doesn't foresee another winless season and draws motivation from not letting that happen in 2016. That, that's what motivates me is to get these guys to where they can have some success and feel good about all the effort and the work and, and the time and the sweat and the blood and everything they put into this. So it, it's going to be a great feeling. For 27 teams in 27 days, I'm Lee K. Howard. Thank you very much, sir. Sam and Amber, that's sports. Let's go back to you. A final check of your first alert forecast is next. And then on the CBS Evening News, why some families are paying nearly 500% more than they used to for a life-saving allergy treatment.